Well, good morning. I trust that you are doing well. Uh, we've made it through another weekend. Now we are in chapter 5 of 1 Timothy. Um, in reading 1 Timothy 5 verses 1 through 8, uh, I went back in my mind to, to a story that I heard not long ago. You see, it was, it was uh, 11 o'clock at night. And Willie was preparing herself for bed. As she made her final preparations, the doorbell rang, but this was no gentle ring. It, it didn't just ring once, but it rang continuously. This can't be good, she thought as she made her way to the front door. And there, the front door of her little modest home, she opened the main door, leaving the storm door bolted um, and found that there was a young man standing on her steps. He was doubled over and holding on to his abdomen. And she, she said, he, he said to her, help me, I've been shot. Call 911. Well, when Willie got, got to the phone and, and called 911 and had the operator on the phone, she said to her, quick, send an ambulance. There's a young man out there who's been shot and he needs help. And at that moment, uh, Willie heard a, a terrible sound. The man had ripped the storm door off of the chain and was in no time in the house and had grabbed Willie she yelled at him to get off of her, and she grabbed the metal TV stand that, uh, that was there on the floor, and she picked it up, and she began, uh, she began wailing his behind. Those are her words. <laughs> During all this commotion, the old telephone was still hanging free, uh, but picking up everything that was going on. It was one of those old old-fashioned telephones that hang on the wall with the with the cord holding it in place. Hearing it all, the operator dispatched not only an ambulance, but uh, as it turns out, four police cars. Meanwhile, Willie didn't let up. She kept whaling that boy's behind. Uh, he fell over a wooden coffee table, breaking it as he landed upon it with his back. Willie grabbed a shampoo bottle that she had gotten from the dollar store that afternoon and she poured it all in his face and made sure that she got it in his eyes. She said, you should have heard the names that boy was calling me. He called me everything but the mother of God, but I didn't let up. When he tried to get up, I grabbed the broom and I kept poking him in the rear telling him to get out of my house. The police officers and ambulance arrived before he could get out, however, and they ended up taking him to the hospital. The officers were, officers were in disbelief. One of them asked her how old she was, and she responded, I'm 82 years old. They were amazed at what she had come through without a scratch. You see... <laughs> What the young man didn't know was that Willie Murphy is a world champion weightlifter and has about 50 trophies to prove it. She only weighs 110 pounds, but she can handle herself. <laughs> I was thinking about that story because I thought, you know, that man could have really benefited from reading 1 Timothy. However, even then, I, I'm not sure he would have ever thought that mistreating an elderly woman would have landed him in the hospital. Paul makes it clear that we have a responsibility to care for the elderly, especially the widows with no children. You know, I've heard churches describe themselves as being like a family. But what they describe is a closed group that one must earn their way into. But what Paul is talking about is a body of believers who are caring for one another. In other words, 
It's a group of people like Seaside United Methodist Church. This congregation continues reaching out during this unique time. And I don't know about Paul, but I'm pretty sure the Lord is pleased. Consider these questions for a moment. Question one, in what ways have you seen the church being the church in these changing times? <clears throat> in what ways have you seen the church being the church in this changing time? Question two, how do you feel God is leading you to be family to those who have none? How do you feel God is leading you to be family to those who have none? Third question. Can you name three persons who could benefit from a phone call from you? If so, what's preventing you from making the call? Can you name three persons who could benefit from a phone call from you? If so, what's preventing you from making the call? I hope you will take some time considering these questions and, and maybe journal them. I hope you're doing that as you've gone through this, these two weeks that we've been uh, reading from 1 Timothy. Uh, so that the time will come when you can go back and read over these and find yourself encouraged inspired um, by what you have recorded there as you've read the scriptures and experienced this time, this very unusual time that we're going through, this time of a new normal where we're being the church in changing times. Have a great day and go in peace. Amen.